Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel. In today's recipe, we are going to be making red velvet sandwich cookies, y'all. So these cookies are so light and fluffy, uh, that signature red velvet taste, but in cookie form in the sandwich it, together with that cream cheese frosted in the middle, y'all, it's a hit, okay? This recipe is super, super easy to follow. It is very beginner friendly. You don't have to be the world's best baker to accomplish. I'm telling y'all, these cookies are everything, okay? Get into how just perfect they are. Light and fluffy. That frosting is just right. It's not too silky, but it's just enough to hold its form. Without further ado, we are going to get into the recipe. So I'm using Duncan Hines um, red velvet cake mix. You can use Betty Crocker. I prefer Duncan Hines, but use what you have or what is available to you in your area. I had to pull out my cake stand mixer. Um, it's just easier, honestly, to mix. So we're gonna add in our cake mix. And then we're gonna follow up with both of our eggs. The eggs are large. And then of course, all ingredients will be in the description box below. We're gonna add in some vanilla extra extract and some melted butter. I'm gonna add my paddle attachment. And then we are going to put it on the level two speed to start off with. You don't wanna start it off too fast and have all of your ingredients flying out of your mixer. So. Eventually, I will speed up the speed gradually up to a level four. And then once well incorporated, this is what you have. As you can see, the mix has taken on that cookie dough texture and that is exactly what we're looking for. So make sure um, everything is well incorporated. So um, I was out of parchment paper, so I used saran wrap. And then you wanna kinda level off your cookie. So don't flatten it too much because you don't want thin cookies um if that's what you prefer cool i like mine to be a little thick and have you know a little height on them so i'm not going to press this all the way out because i don't want flat cookies so i'm using a two inch cookie cutter um as you can see it has like the little indentations i want to use the smooth side because that's just the look that i'm going for so i'm just going to go ahead and cut out as many cookies that it would allow this recipe does make quite a few um but you want to make sure that it is thick so go ahead and cut out all of the cookies while you can and look you want all of them to have that uniform look as well and then i have a cookie sheet on the side of me that i will transfer them over to so i'm just going to cut them all out i'll take them transfer and then i'll roll the dough back out and just keep Continuing until all of the dough is used and I have all of the cookies that I possibly can from this recipe. So I'm all done. Um, as I said before, I placed them on cookie sheets. As you can see, you wanna make sure they have enough space in between um, because they will spread just a little bit, but you're gonna put it in the oven on 350 for eight to 10 minutes. And we're done. So look how beautiful um, these little, and they're so little and cute. So I pulled them out of the oven and I'm gonna let them sit for a sec here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and transfer them over to a cookie rack so they can cool completely. And while they are cooling, we are going to get started on our cream cheese filling. Y'all get into the moisture cracks in the cookies. Let, let's do our filling, okay? So in a bowl, I have some softened cream cheese and softened unsalted butter. And then you want to um, beat that down and make sure that it's well incorporated before adding in your sugar. Um, I didn't add in any vanilla in this recipe. Feel free to. You can add in vanilla. It will just make it even better. And then I'm going to add in our powdered sugar. I do not sift um, my powdered sugar. I just add it from the bag straight to the bowl and everything is fine. So I want to incorporate half of the powdered sugar first, make sure that that's well incorporated. It just makes less of a mess. And then I'm gonna add in the rest of my powdered sugar. Again, don't worry, all measurements will be in the description box below.
So my cookies are nice and cool. Um, I had them sitting on a rack for about 10, 15, 20 minutes. So I'm gonna flip over every other row and this just makes assembly way better. I've transferred my icing into a piping bag and we're gonna use this circle tip um, to go ahead and make sure that our icing is nice and neat on the inside. And you don't wanna put way too much icing so that it's overpowering the cookie. You want just enough so that you can enjoy it. So I just freestyled and did a little circular motion and I made sure I got around the edges first um, just because for presentation purposes, that is the most important to go around the outer border and then just put like a little dollop in the middle. So once I'm done, um, you don't want to push down either. You just want to gently place your cookie on top. And look how cute, though. like how freaking cute are these, y'all. You can sell these, you can use this for any occasion, literally. And they just, they're so dope. And it was so easy, like we're done. That is the end of the recipe. And y'all, this is a close up of the actual cookie. Ooh, like you don't need ice cream. Like you could, this is literally a sandwich, but if you wanted to, you could add ice cream, vanilla ice cream in the middle of the sandwich um, versus the cream cheese and it'll be just as good. Or you can add chocolate chips to this to also take to the next flavor. I am just plain simple and I think that this is best. Simplicity is always the best for me. So. Thank you guys for tuning in to another video, all your continuous support. If you do follow this recipe and make these cookies, please let me know in the comment section how it turned out for you. And I will see you guys again with another video.